What's cracking, y'all? I am Nick Danger, and you are now tuned into the Art of MV. Welcome to my channel, and thanks for watching the video, fellas. So, you checked out the check out the title. It says, uh, "The MV, the most valuable piece." Right, right. So, this subject has come up a couple of times in both my MV8000 group and my MV worst my MV uh MV1 verse lab group as well. In the MV1 verse lab group it surfaced a little different, but the MV8000 group it's like you can find these things for so cheap that it's a, when you get it you're just wondering what to do with it cuz you're so surprised you found it for so cheap, right? And I've seen this. I've seen people buy this thing, put it in the closet and then go, "Hey, I just took my MV out the closet, wondering what I can do with it. I'm like, what? <laughs> right? Now, on the Verse Lab side of the MV thing, you have the price went down. The price has went down. Now, some people are like, it's like uh, the chicken with the sky is falling thing. They think that means that they're about to actually abandon the gear, right? They're actually about to abandon it, and that's just not the case. Um, they are definitely developing this thing, and they just gave us a nice little update that I finally got around to doing. So, here's the thing. The value in these things, I would think, even if you're not using your MV, it's probably still the most valuable piece you, gear you're going to buy. On my screen right here, I have a few of the shared MFX modules that are shared by both the Verse Lab and the MV8000-8800. Things like the SBF-325 flanger, So right here on this screen you see there's the CE1 chorus, there's the SBF 325 chorus, flanger chorus, stereo flanger chorus. There is the SD, the SDD 320 which on the 8000 is called the 4 button 320 chorus, right? And we're going to throw the RES, uh, the RE 201 space echo or space delay whichever one it is that's a guitar pedal and let me see the SBF is going to run you a couple of grand here on eBay and probably on reverb as well here's the RE1 space delay that's a stack at least that's the cheapest I saw that. So we're already at three grand for either a 20 year old MV that'll that you can find for four. Oh, I'm sorry, you can find that for, for between 350 and 700, or a brand new MV, which right now on Zounds was going to cost you 499, and I'm already at two grand. But let's not stop there. Let's go the Let's go with the let's see here. There's the VP nine thousand, which is specific to the eight thousand. That'll cost you six fifty. And we got the three twenty four button chorus. That's gonna cost you another nine thirty four. So we're already at roughly four grand for pieces of gear that will cost you no more than 500 bucks so just that little those that handful of effects alone makes these two pieces of gear already some of the most valuable pieces of gear you're going to buy but let's not stop there so before we leave 8000 world and I show you a little bit more of my verse lab because that's the new joint, right? Note that the one thing that the 8000 is going to bring 
that you're not going to find anymore. That's going to, I think, may drop. It may pull the value up if people find out about it. Is that it has a sound. Um, the output converters are legendary to color the sound as well as the input. For so when you do sample, you can color the sound coming in barely t without even doing anything. In addition, you can apply M effects at the input and color the sound that way. But with the 3.5.1 upgrade, they also turned the S770's uh, edit menu into um, a sound design tool, basically giving it it's a dual oscillator synthesizer. So, and it has its own, once again, a synth with its own sound, uh, its own fat sound. Those are some, some nice oscillators. You can create some fat basses and a lot of lush pads in here. And hopefully I'll get to do some live and I'll get to display some of that because I got a ton of uh, sounds that were created right inside the MV to display. So that's one thing is that the 770 is undeniable. And if you want to check it out, you can go look up the history of the 770 and more people will tell you'll see a lot of good things said about that particular sound architecture. So that's one thing. But over here and a way that I'm going to actually port over that classic sound to my new music is by hooking up the outputs of my MV8000 to the MV1 Verse Lab. So the one thing that's cool about the Verse Lab that I think goes understated, once again, I like to find the understated stuff. So I'll leave to the, the, the gurus to show you how to do things because I'm not patient like that, but the concepts and the things on the inside of your MV that make it what it is, yeah, I like to go talk about all that. So if you go into settings in here, you'll see that this is actually an interface, right? And the way you do that is that basically you switch your driver over from, gener from, from uh, generic to vendor. And the MV1 Verse Lab becomes an, becomes an interface to whatever uh, USB DAW you got it hooked up to basically making you having given you access or giving you the ability to to go two-way audio over USB for eight tracks so if I had that stuff already set up right now like I have the vendor but it's not in the right mode but if I had it in the right mode when you go to audio you'd see eight channels of audio output over here and as for the audio device it would say MV1 Verse Lab right because that's what you will be connecting with and using it as an interface, right? And the way that they were able to get away with this and the way they were able to do this was your MV1 Verse Lab is just this. It's just, well, it's not just this, but the mixer part is this, the compressor EQ. That, that is an eight track audio interface with a digital mixer on board. So it has its own DSP, and everything and basically what you're looking at is a hardware representation of what you see on the screen in front of you here right and I'm always going to plug these Zenbeats uh, application uh, up and kind of kind of go over this part with my fellow MV1 guys because this is the fun part now I also want to show you guys how much how you could actually go from platform to platform from iOS device to MacBook Pro well so you, if you recall the last time I did uh, MV1 Verse Lab video with Zimbeats is usually on my phone or it's on an iPad this time what you're looking at is my MacBook Pro projected via HDMI cord to a 35 inch monitor so you can imagine what that looks like only, only difference is is that now I have to use the trackpad to you know to do stuff like this and then you can go in and out from here's clip mode now let's start this up all right so what we have here is clip mode on my MacBook Pro so this is the main MV track right here on the MV8000, this would be a pattern track within linear mode. This whole top row is just a pattern track. 
below this one, the top row, are the different tracks that you use for the said pattern. So on section five, it's only that. And that's why it's pretty empty. Let me put this on. That's why it's pretty empty over there. If I move to the section next to it, which is four, just a little bit more. And note that each section has its own MFX channel, right? So all those 90 plus effects, the SP effects, like DJ Looper, BPM Looper, Phonograph, the Spectrum effect, the EQs, the low boosts, everything is available to each section individually. And you can either scroll through with the menu diving or you can do this. Now, the reason I haven't gone further is because I want to do a live or do a video where I'm upgrading all this to enhance the work production even more for the MV studio. So this is how I'm going to run the channel, basically using both MVs because basically I can turn this MV and record it directly into the looper track with its tempo and everything locked in and then just use it on the looper track and mix it into Zen Beats that way. So if we're talking about not having to go and get another interface, I just saved myself a bunch of effing money because the MV1 is an interface. It's like buying another VS100. Only thing is, and you, I can go into any DAW that I want. I don't have to use Zen Beats. I could be going into my Cakewalk DAW because I have the exact same Zen Beats program on my Windows computer. So this is the other value that the MV1 has brought to the table that has gone under the radar is that you literally you literally get another interface, right? And how valuable is that? This is the art of MV. I'll check you out next time. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section. Peace.